Okay, I have to be uh, completely honest. Uh, the, your recipes, uh, I use them as uh, seduction techniques. So oh, it's boy. like I know. It's, I've uh, heard that before, though. Yeah. You're not the first. It's like sorry. So it's like <laughs> yes, I use your recipes to get laid. I will admit it. Whoa! I will admit it. <laughs> I'm a shallow man, boy. Uh, so what I'm hoping is that uh, you can give me a recipe in this book that'll uh, get me lucky. Well, now, you know, everybody's got a different taste, but I'll tell you a recipe that I made it, um, I made it uh, on one of the trips that I was on to promote the book, and um, there was a young woman who was married to a chef, mm -hmm. and she said that she never cooks for him because nothing's good enough, and that the recipe that I'm going to tell you about right now was so delicious that she was going home to make it for him. So I think this is going to be your lucky recipe. Okay. Okay. So you make... Uh, sweet potatoes, and you mash them with maple syrup and a little bit, tiny bit of olive oil and some candy ginger. And then, you know, you keep them hot, but then you put them on the plate, okay, in the center of the plate. Then you take some spinach, the fresh baby spinach that's available now, and you wilt it just by turning it over in a skillet. You don't add any liquid to it. If you want a tiny bit of sesame oil and a little bit of um, salt and pepper, put that in and then just take some tongs and keep turning the spinach until it wilts and put that on top of the mashed sweet potatoes. And then take some fish, like I usually use halibut or wild salmon, but you could also do this with chicken breast. You could do it with a steak and slice it thin. You, know, you could do it with a lot of different things, shrimps. And I take the halibut and I keep it in one piece and I put a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper and some um, fresh thyme and I roast it in the oven for about 12 minutes, just until it's cooked through. Take that out of the oven and divide it into two, or I'm not even gonna go there about how many people you might be having over, but anyway. And then put that on top of the spinach, okay? And then while the fish is cooking, you're taking some cherry tomatoes and you're sauteing them with some garlic and some olive oil again, just a little bit of olive oil, but olive oil is a healthy fat. It has a lot of flavor, you don't use too much and some garlic and maybe a little bit of cumin and paprika and um, saute them until they split open and then when they split open you spoon them on top of the fish. So picture this, you've got these beautifully colored sweet potatoes, then the spinach, then the fish and then the cherry tomatoes sort of just rolling down the top of the fish and it is delicious and it's beautiful and it's a winner. This is good. I like, like this. That? I like this. Uh, there's there's one that uh, there's a picture in the book and uh, of um, oh, smoked sushi salmon pizza. sushi pizza. That's very beautiful. Which uh, that's it's I mean, beautiful I mean, and easy. Yeah, so easy to make. But, you know, sushi pizza, pretty different. Well, you know, this is this is a way that you you make a recipe your own. So the way I got inspired to make this sushi pizza is I went to a Japanese restaurant, and this was a while ago and their big new rage was pizzas, sushi pizzas. And they take the rice and they mold it into something that might look like a hamburger patty and they deep fry it and they put it on your plate and then they put smoked salmon on top and wasabi and some cucumber or maybe not cucumber, whatever they put on top. And it was really delicious. But I saw an idea there that you could mold the sushi, but don't fry it. Because the deep frying is not, not so hard smart. Well, it's not so hard smart, and it's also something that I don't like to do at home. It's not that I never eat deep fried foods, but I find that if I use them as a treat and have them once in a while when I go out to eat, that's enough. I don't have to be deep frying at home. So um, I take an 8 by 8 inch Pyrex dish, and I line it with saran wrap and I put some cucumber, very thin cucumber slices down and then I put smoked salmon on top of that in a single layer and then I put sushi rice, I cook rice according to um, you know Japanese short grain rice and then when it's cooked you put in a little bit of um, sweetened or sushi vinegar and then you pat it in on that like a layer of it and then you put a piece of nori, a layer of nori and then you put more sushi rice in and you really pat it down, put some saran wrap on top and really like maybe I'll take a tin of tomatoes or something and roll them over the top so that it'll compress it and then I leave it for about an hour and you can put it in the fridge if you have to or you know if it's cool in your house you can leave it out that long and then you invert it and it comes out in a big cake and it cuts beautifully like you can cut it into 
36 pieces for, you know, a piece for, but I cut it into millions of pieces, you know, for little tiny bites and sample sizes. But 36 is a nice size. And then everybody can just pop them in their mouth. And it is so delicious and it looks beautiful. People think you're a culinary genius when you make something like this. Heart smart chocolate brownies. No way. Sure. No. Sure. Well, the first thing, the first trick about them is that it's made with cocoa. And cocoa doesn't have a lot of fat in it. Cocoa has very, very little fat in it. So if you use cocoa when you're making any kind of chocolate dessert or chocolate sauce or something like that, you get a very rich chocolate flavor, but you don't get a lot of fat with it. So that is a trick. Also, in place of some of the fat that would normally be in a brownie, you're using applesauce. And this recipe comes from a friend of mine who's a big, very important pastry chef in New York. And he let me put the recipe in the book, and they're delicious. And you can make them ahead and freeze them. They don't taste exactly like my super rich chocolate brownies, but they're pretty good. The book is Heart Smart, the best of Heart Smart Cooking, revised and updated with 100 new recipes. I've been speaking with the author Bonnie Stern at the Bonnie Stern Cooking School in Toronto. And Bonnie Stern's Heart Smart is published by Random House of Canada.